Have you ever spent a lot of time in campgrounds and thought, this is not how I would do it? There's a lot of money going into campground construction right now, and today we're going to talk about what we would do if we designed a campground. That and a lot more on this episode of RV Miles. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean, dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just the right layers, perfect for changing weather, to sun-smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean. Be an outsider. Welcome to episode 187 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. We're wrapping up our stay here at Davis Bayou, one of our favorite campgrounds as part of the Gulf Islands National Seashore in Mississippi, this is the Mississippi unit, and it travels all the way over to Pensacola, where the uh, the Fort Pickens area is as well. We we love this area. We love the Gulf Coast, and uh, we're sad to be leaving it. I know, and the weather has started to get so beautiful. Today, it's 74 and sunny, and I think if you've been watching this podcast over the last several weeks, it's almost like you can watch the weather progression with Jason and Abby. Today, I am in a tank top, which is like amazing. I haven't had one of those on since last summer. So it's wonderful to be here. I will say it's been a couple years since we've been here. And I do think that this National Park Campground is now ready for a little TLC. Well, it's clear that there's been some hurricane damage uh, yes. around here and they're they're working on it. But the roads roads are in, in need of some maintenance and the campsites themselves the camping pads are in need of a little the rv pads i should say and also there's you know the roads are just getting torn up now the trees are starting to kind of take we, over which is we're kind of cracking up at the the campsite next to us which is the the accessible campsite uh, yes and it is no different from ours except mm -mm. for the fact that the pad is slightly wider in the back where where the uh where the fire pit is so but, somebody in a wheelchair could go right up to the fire pit but it's nowhere near the bathhouse well <laughs> no it's well it's the closest to the bathhouse sort of but, but there's no path there's no path but what's interesting is that extra bit of concrete doesn't even match up with someone's rv door so the door still walks out onto the grass so there's, you know, this is just a campground Very that, strange. yeah, it's just a campground that's, you know, I think one of those that I hope is on the list that they're going to just give a little love to because it, it does need it. It's such a great campground in such a great location. So it's, and it's very, very popular and it's starting to show. Yeah. Uh, we're moving on from here up towards the north. We're going to start moving up into the great state of Alabama mm -hmm. here in the next, uh, next couple of weeks and uh and then on to tennessee so uh if you are watching on video you might have noticed that there have not been video episodes for the last two weeks nope uh so if or you, two episodes actually. two episodes yeah. yeah it wasn't two weeks over the course of one week two episodes the last two episodes were podcast only so if you're watching on youtube you might want to head over to the podcast feed if you want to go listen to those but uh we're going to continue putting them out on youtube we just <laughs> needed a couple of days off to stop looking like we had chicken pox. The, the no see a lot of people have asked us what no see are because they haven't heard of them. I hadn't heard them either before we hit the road, but basically they, they bite you like mosquitoes do, but they're like, so small that you can't see them. Yeah, but one mosquito bite, I feel like, equates to 30 Yeah, no they, they just bites. hop they, around you and bite. They crazy fierce. Anyway, we have we have droned on and on about these. So look, <laughs> I, I'm wondering what Alabama has in store for us in regards to no seams because we have we haven't been outside. We've not been spending any time outside at our campground because it doesn't matter what we have on our bodies. They just attack us. There's something about the Eppersons that they really, really like here. 
I have no idea what it is, though. All right. We have a listener question. Uh, this is actually a question that comes from the Facebook group. Which you should come join if yes. you haven't had a chance yet. Come on over to Facebook and join the RV Miles Facebook group. Actually, a couple questions we're yes. going to get to. The first one, we have an A-liner and from the dot code on the sidewall. So an A-liner is one of those A-shaped, uh, sort of like a pop-up camper. Yeah, there was just but, one in the yeah. campground the other day. They're really cute. And from the Department of Transportation code on the sidewall of the tire, they look to be five years old. Do you think we need new tires? Now, if you don't know about finding out the age of your tires, there is a code on your sidewall. It's, it's, it generally says dot and then four numbers. And the numbers are the, the week of the, and, and then the year. So the first two numbers are like, it might say 16. So that would be the 16th week of, you know, then it would say 19, 2019. So that's how you can tell how old your tires are. Now with motorhomes, I'm generally recommending to people with a motorhome that they can probably go up to seven years with regular inspection of their tires. Motorhome tires are a little bit more ru- robust and they don't take as much abuse as trailer tires. Trailer tires, I usually recommend no more than five years. Now, an A-liner is a single axle trailer, and single axle trailers don't take as much abuse. When when you've got multiple axles on a trailer, those the 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 tires sort of scrub mm. as you turn, and mm. and that that's why trailer tires have sort of a thicker sidewall. I don't know if we should be talking about tires because we have to travel <laughs> tomorrow, and you're sitting over here talking to me about what our tires are going to do, and it's you know I'm already getting stressed out. But trailer tires, it, it's usually best to to change them out every every five years ago. The, the, the thing about trailer tires is, especially if you have multiple axles, often you don't realize if you've had, people talk about blowouts all the time and the, the China bomb tires, but my feeling is that 90% of those are tire punctures that you never realize mm-hmm. happened because you've got that other axle that's still holding your trailer up. So you're going down the road and you got a flat and it doesn't look like a flat, but that tire is heating up until the point that it goes <sighs> blah and, and destroys everything. Oh, good. Anyway, it, it's best to have, you know, obviously decent tires. My palms are sweating. <laughs> My palms are sweating while we're talking about this. And it, it, I do also recommend that you upgrade tires if you're, trailer came with some super cheapos because a lot of them do yes which we did and that brought me a lot of peace of mind <laughs> i'm already being bit already i've right. been out here 10 minutes next question rookie question we rented five rvs for five nights when we thought that was a typo yes. it is not they huh. rented five rvs it was five families yes. that rented five <laughs> rvs for five nights i was like wow i want to hang out with these people they're just renting <laughs> rvs for fun should we pack up night four and head to a different campground closer to our rental site to make meeting our 1 p.m. return time easier? Or is it too much work to dismantle all the hookups and pack up twice? So this question, now that we know it's actually five (laughs) RVs and five families, it changes the way I actually would do things. Like if it was just our family. So I can see why that question would be like, should we just pack up and do everything? We're literally trying to move 10 adults and however many kids and get somewhere by one o'clock. I mean, that's, that's tough. My opinion on it is no, I wouldn't relocate to another campground closer to your meetup site, but I would pack and prep as much as humanly possible on Thursday, especially if, and I just assumed it was a Thursday. <laughs> I don't know why. I just thought like they're, that's like they're going Friday. home on a Friday um, because they're new at this yeah. and we aren't and we still have issues every single time well, we, it just we, something comes up and it takes longer we try to do that too we try to pack up what we can the night before if it, especially if it's going to be a big drive day yes like we're supposed to be doing today but, but instead, instead it's three o'clock in the afternoon and we're recording a podcast <laughs> outside in the clam with all the things out yes we're arriving in the evening tomorrow <laughs> no we're not we we will do this that's the impossible so my opinion on it is don't do the extra work of the setup and the unhooking and all of that, or just the arriving at another campground on Thursday night, go ahead and just pack up as much as you can. And then, you know, make 
breakfast in that morning really simple. Yeah. You know, make everything very, very simple. Even pick it, it up if you yeah. want. Yeah. Heck, put the kids to bed in the clothes they're going to wear we do that the next a lot. day. We do that a lot too if we're really wanting to get on the road at a decent time. I don't know what their drive time is. Yeah, that's that's the big you know, other factor. Now, if the drive time is going to cut you very close by getting up and leaving by 7 a.m., then maybe it's worth it to drive closer the night before. Yeah, but if, you know, you're talking two or three hours to get to your one o'clock uh, meetup, then I would say just, you know, plan to get everybody up maybe a little half hour early, you know, just have as much as you can have prepped, have the kids in their clothes already for the day, toss some toast at some people, maybe a granola bar. And don't forget that just your your travel time is going to be longer than in, in an RV than it would be, you know, than what Google Maps is telling you. It's always we be generally add fifteen minutes per hour. That's sort of our best estimation. That usually comes out fairly close. It's still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, we. No, I if, think if, it's a half look, an hour. No, it's fifteen minutes per hour, but that requires that we actually leave on time. <laughs> 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 yeah, and that never happens. When I got home from doing laundry, there was a line for the dump station here. Yeah. So it was about 11, 1130 that I got home. And I thought to myself, oh boy, we need to get out of here before the 11 o'clock hour tomorrow. Otherwise we are, I mean, it was three or four deep. You can you could and, be waiting an hour in line at the dump yeah. station. And then you've got to do your thing, which could take, you know, <laughs> you 10 minutes You got to do your more. thing. Yeah. I know. And so... We have, I would say we probably have a four or five hour drive tomorrow. You know, we've been sitting for almost two weeks, so we're going to do a little bit of a drive tomorrow. And I would like to see us rolling out of here between 930 and 10. Not rolling out of here, I mean, just rolling over to the dump station because that in itself is another half an hour yeah. before we're actually out of the campground. So, you know, if we can, we we have to get moving tomorrow. Or we're going to get stuck in the line because it's Friday. So the point here is that even after doing this for four years, we have these same conversations as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we could very easily have been that person that posted that. And, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it was because I was just really pleased to see that someone who's new at this felt comfortable asking. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I was just really pleased to see the number of responses and encouraging responses that, you know, were helpful, that didn't make this person feel bad, like, oh, great, another newbie. I really, really detest when new to RVers ask, you know, a question and then all the quote unquote seasoned RVers just come in and basically like there's a Google for oh, that. Oh boy, there's a lot of that happening right now. I know, Ooh. I know. And so I'm, you know, I thank the RV Miles Facebook group. I, I'm thankful that it's still small enough that that's not really happening yet. But I'm also just really thankful that the people in there just are coming from a place of inclusivity and kindness, you know, because as long as we continue to come from that place, then, you know, there's no question that someone shouldn't feel like they could ask. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what we would do if we built a campground. Plus, we'll have the answer to last week's brain teaser. WWJD, what would Jason do? <laughs> no, what would we do? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that when we come back. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV. And the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector, made by Hughes Auto Formers, beats the competition with field replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you gotta throw it away. The Power Watchdog can be brought back to life with one small, affordable part you can replace yourself. It's the last surge protector you need to buy. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoFormers.com. That's code RVMILES for 10% off at HughesAutoFormers.com. Outdoor enthusiasts of all stripes will enjoy Pelican gear on their adventures. Hard-sided Pelican Elite coolers are all made in America and are available in a wide number of sizes. Get a 20-quart for short day trips, a 50-quart for week-long adventures, or a wheeled 45 quart to keep the fun rolling along. Pelican backs all their hard sided coolers with a lifetime warranty, too. RV Miles listeners can get a free day venture tumbler when they visit elitecooler.com slash RV Miles and spend over a hundred dollars. It's time for the answer to last week's brain teaser, which went like this. 
translate this with this long, ridiculous sentence I'm about to say into what would be a common phrase. When a thing is imperative to the survival or needs of a certain person, that act becomes a female parent to the certain innovation which results. This was last week's brain teaser? Yes. You weren't paying, you, you were zoned out. Right? Are you, you serious? Yes. See, this is what happens when we're not filming. I don't have to listen. To this. <laughs> wow. I, I'm pretty wow. sure, I'm pretty sure I was on Facebook checking some things. I'm pretty sure you said you were on Facebook. I, I'm yes, sorry. I, I have a feeling I was, I was on Facebook seeing what's going on around uh, RV Miles. So, I, yeah, this... yeah, around RV Miles. What are Harry and Megan up to? Hey, okay. I finally got around to watching that interview last night, and that was intense. Okay? No tangents. Moving on. It was intense. <laughs> the answer is necessity is the mother of invention. We'll have a new brain teaser later on in the show, but now it is time to talk campgrounds. Let's talk at campgrounds, Jason. Look, we have been, we have been on. I've done more of this than you lately because you don't want to do it. But people have been asking us. Um, to, to get on conference calls a lot lately to talk about what we like in campgrounds. And these are people that are building resorts that are costing tens of millions of dollars, lots and lots of money. There are big, big camping resorts being built right now. Can I just say before we go on, because I need to address yeah. said the elephant now that you threw out in the room. It's not that I don't want to have these conversations I'm not, I don't want it to seem like I'm being snooty. It's just that you're better oh, okay. at, listen, at be expressing, a at, yeah. I am better at caring for the children <laughs> while you <laughs> are on the phone. Yes. I, you know, All right. I, I, <laughs> if I could have that conversation via text, I would be there so fast. But when you ask me to get on the phone, I get busy. So we just try to answer those questions truthfully about, you know what you uh the listener the 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 RVer out there might want and we try to answer them based on you know what the resort they're building like if they're building a tens of millions of dollars resort i'm answering those questions based on what i want when i visit one of those places which you know we might do from time to time we don't do it that often but from time to time we'll splurge and go to a really cool place right and, and i'm happy that those places are there but what's oh, yeah what's happening right now in the campground industry is that there's a lot of people recognizing that there's a lot of money to be made in campgrounds right now and because there's a lot of rvers right now and rving is growing and growing and growing so there's a lot of investment capital going into campgrounds and they're often from the other hospitality industries like hotels and they often, one of the four businesses right they <laughs> so the office <laughs> reference there uh there, there is they're they're looking to build you know these luxury experiences and that's cool and all um and, and then the other thing that's happening a lot is a lot of people are buying rundown campgrounds and freshening them up. And that's cool as well. But we, we're not here to talk no. about any of that. What we think is missing is money going into building nice, friendly, affordable, convenient campgrounds. Yeah, this is, this is what we're going to do today. We're going to play a yeah. game, essentially, that's what if Jason and Abby had an unlimited amount of money and could build their own campground? Yeah. What would Jason and Abby put in their campground? So the first thing, because we actually were having this conversation yesterday, and it it was like fireworks were just shooting off over your head. This is what I do. I just, my this brain is, just goes. It does. It's, you, it's just all day long. And so sometimes if I ask him a question and I'm looking for just one answer, I get like 50 answers. And then I think to myself, oh, wow, this is something. We should talk about this. Like, he's got so many ideas. So... <laughs> We, steal this idea. We need to talk about this. One of the things that the very first thing, if we were to build a campground, and this is just in our world, the kind of campground we would love to go to. It would absolutely be a campground that had full hookups at every site, but it would feel like it was a state or federal campground. So obviously it would still be a private campground but we would have these really big sites 
Yeah, you know, and th- there are ways to accomplish that without making it. Um, you know, you obviously you still got to make money, right? And I, right, I, I had said why that they I cram them in, but. I had said that I wanted to do pull throughs and then you were like, well, if we do pull throughs, we can't have these big sites. So anyway, I'm going to just like jump in every once in a while, but I literally just want you to start talking the way you were talking to me yesterday. Okay. Right. And then I will, I will just jump in. Cause I think what you were talking about, I couldn't find, like, I couldn't disagree with, but I thought it was just really cool. The way you just started rolling, you were essentially building this beautiful picture for all of us in the RV yesterday. And I thought maybe you could okay. do that here. Well, here's the, the big focus. The, the big picture portion of this is that I think a lot of people RV because it is a more affordable way to travel than going to hotels and resorts. Um, uh, it's also COVID friendly. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a lot of reasons. Um, it's a very convenient way to get around. Uh, also, a lot of people hate uh, they hate hotels because they don't want to use bathrooms and beds and bedding and stuff that other people use. A lot of people just like to have their own stuff. A lot of people want to travel with pets, all that sort of stuff. But I think a lot of people are looking for affordability. So I'm looking at like, if you're looking at the hotel world, like the Holiday Inn Express, you know, a decent, nice hotel to go to. It's not a bit, when you, when you plan out a giant vacation to, you know, you're going to, uh, you're you're going to visit a, a really fantastic area. You don't normally go to the Holiday Inn Express. Like that's your no, one vacation whoa, of the year. Hold up, that but, one that we went to though, when we right. were driving from Minot back to the Quad Cities, that had that killer like water slide feature. Yeah. Our kids still talk about that. Plus, that room was like really really nice. But I mean, the idea I think is to build a campground because a lot of people are camping. To travel. They want to yes. visit the area. It's not yeah. necessarily about going to the campground and having a resort experience. It's about well, having a place to visit an area, right? For some. For some. Is but that, th- this is the style of campground I'm the, looking at. At the Jason and Abby yeah. campground. That's what it is. It's it's not a it's not a destination. It's part of the journey. Right. <laughs> so here's what I think. You you build something aimed at being affordable, but was still fun and comfortability built in you make it simple you make it repeatable and you make it well thought out and designed you make it friendly and clean so can i say when we go to friendly and clean and simple mm-hmm. one of the things i was surprised that you said yesterday but then once we got into it and talked about it was that you said my campground would not have a playground no. and your children were shocked i know right i also wouldn't have a pool and this I'm is fine why. with that this there's is, no need for a pool. right and a lot of people insist on going to a campground that has a pool or That's a playground fine. we love they we, can go down the street look we look for playgrounds right we, do. we, we plan on playgrounds because that's a big thing for kids but but jason doesn't want jason's not gonna have one i'm gonna replace <laughs> playgrounds this is the thing with something more because do you know how much it costs to put in just a swing set Mm-hmm. A, a a proper good swing set can cost ten thousand dollars to put in. So what I'm going to put in instead of a playground, so we're going to have a nice lawn, and it's going to have outdoor games like big ones, like the giant Connect Fours, like giant blocks and other like big outdoor fun games, bags, all that sort of stuff. You are taking this for anyone who's listened to a recent podcast. You are taking this idea directly from the silos. The Magnolia. Yes, at Magnolia. Yes. They do a fantastic job yes. there where they've got just a big open AstroTurf field that's low maintenance for them. And they have lots of like outdoor games and stuff. And then they have sort of a, a pavilion stage thing where yeah. they can have activities. And we loved that. We loved the idea of that. And we thought something like that would just translate so well to a campground because it is. It's easy to maintain, but it also allows for versatility of space. 60% of RVers travel with pets would definitely have a dog park, a fenced in dog park for dogs to run. I think that is essential for every campground right now. And I don't even have a dog. I Well, and having traveled with friends who did have a dog, the struggle is real. Yeah. You know, your dog deserves somewhere to run around just as much as the children do. We would have a single building. That building would have the main office with a little store. It would have the bathrooms built into it. It would have all the necessities that that the building features of the campground require in one space. It would have a nice business center 
where you can go and get, so you don't have to worry about building out a super tens of thousands of dollars campground Wi-Fi system that's never going to work anyway. Uh, you know, some of them, we've been to a few places that have excellent ones that actually do yeah, work. Yeah, Verde but, Ranch was pretty, I mean, that was pretty good Wi-Fi there. But they spend a lot of money yeah. on it. And so what I would do is create a business center that's got really good Wi-Fi in the business center that you can go and get the stuff that you need to accomplish done in there. You know what I would put, and this is me because I've been jonesing for this lately, I would put mini golf. At our campground, that that's, I would have mini that's, golf. That's mm-hmm. another thing that lots of stuff like that is a lot easier to do. A a, a little nine hole mini golf course yeah. than a playground. It'd have a little water feature, you know. It'd have it just. I think that that is something too that is just universal. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It's families, individuals, everybody enjoys playing mini golf, and I have been wanting to play mini golf for months now i'm just like i'm jonesing for it i I don't know why so our our campground would have mini golf our campground would also accept packages yes our campground would take packages and we would never ever kick you out for getting (laughs) a package no and in fact i've had a, a a conversation with the campground owner recently asking us what the best way for them to deal with packages is because Mm -hmm. they have a small office. And I think it is important to, to be able to do that nowadays for, for travelers in general. Um, But there are ways to, to manage it because some of these places get overrun with packages. It it really does happen. You don't have the option for it as much. I think if more campgrounds offered it, we wouldn't order all the things when we get to the campground that does. Also, I I do really want to encourage people, you know, even if you can get packages to your campground, if it's an Amazon package, really consider using an Amazon hub to kind of alleviate some of the packages coming to the campground. Only order the ones that you're not ordering from Amazon or maybe they're too big for a hub. But we have loved using Amazon hub when we can. Yeah. And I, I would say, you know, that's another way to to kind of help with, you know, overrunning and, and showing campgrounds that they should and it is OK and they're not going to be overwhelmed if they do allow packages to come to their campground. If more campgrounds start doing that, then again, it won't be like I have 50 things I need to order and I've only got seven days to do it in. We have had so many great experiences over the course of the last year with contactless check-in and Mm -hmm. being able to just arrive at your site. I think we would totally do that. We're going to get rid of gates. We're going to get rid of like walking in and talking to somebody. You drive to your site and you stop there and you're, you're all set, right? And you just open your phone and you just check in and, and you're done. You know, I would have though... I would still have a gate. Well, and you, I and it would but it would just be at night and it would just be closed for security and there sure. would be a gate code and you would get all of that in an automatic email. But no stopping and having to wait for somebody, you know, go in oh, and talk yeah, to somebody. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. You, go you just go right to your site. You get you get settled, you check in on the app. And then if for whatever reason there's something extra we need or whatever, we can come over to your campsite and take care of it. But like I wouldn't I would completely eliminate the need to stop and and go in to the business office. But I think the very most important things are. Friendly staff. That Mm -hmm. would be a that would be a major component to this. And. Wait, so you wouldn't have people that would come up to your kids and like be like, you're going to pick up this whole circuit board (laughs) if you drop your iPad. (laughs) <laughs> you wouldn't hire. If you drop you that iPad, you're going to clean up all those circuit boards. You wouldn't hire anyone that would tell children that they have to clean up circuit boards. Okay, I, I just, I just want to oh make sure gosh. that's a real throwback. That's a real th- RV Miles throwback. So for anyone that gets it, I, I love you. For anyone who doesn't get it, I also love you. Don't worry about no it. No grumpy maintenance people <laughs> working for us, and that's that's the thing. A lot of campgrounds don't realize is that sometimes. You know, they hire grumpy maintenance people who are very good at their maintenance jobs. But they're but grumpy. Those end up being the peop- the people that the customers end up talking to the most because yeah. they're the ones driving around they're, doing everything. They're the ones that end up getting yelped mm-hmm. and trip advised <laughs> and campendiumed. We have friendly staff. We make it simple. We make it easy. 
and we keep it affordable. That's that's the gist of it. Yeah. And then and then you build a system that's repeatable. So you've got this design that you can alter in different ways and build a network of these campgrounds so that then you can make it, you know, it's scalable. If you look at these 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 tens of millions of dollar resorts right so you, you build a resort for 50 million dollars i just had an idea but you keep going okay you build a resort for 50 million dollars then you're able to say charge those people 80 to 100 dollars a night right mm -hmm. if you can build a resort for 10 percent of that five million dollars and charge those people so you're building up for 10 percent of it and you're charging the customers you know half as much or slightly less than half under 40 dollars you can recoup a heck of a lot faster. That's the thing is I think this is a better business model. I completely agree with you. And I had just the most wonderful idea. So you know how we would have the like pavilion area or whatever we want to call it with the turf and there'll be a stage and everything. Shakespeare in the park in the summer. Fantastic. We could do... And we would do them like the condensed versions that Chicago Shakespeare does over the summer where they take a piece of uh, a Shakespeare play and they turn it into a 90 minute more condensed family friendly performance. Well, if you put we would do that if you put this this open play type area, this big open field, you put this in the front of the park where it's still accessible to other people. So then it becomes a thing where you can have stuff like that. You yes. can have farmer's market events. You could have food trucks come in. You can have that type of fun atmosphere that is created by other people. It's yes. not created by the resort. Because some of my fondest theater memories are theater outdoors. Musicals outdoors in the summer when I was in Kansas City. We'd go to theater in the park. When we were in Chicago and we would go downtown to, you know, the Pritzker Pavilion and, and we'd go down for Broadway night down there and we'd just see these amazing performances under the stars. You know, what an incredible thing to be able to do at your campground. Yeah. You know, and let's say, you know, you have 40 or 50 sites. That's somewhere between 100 to possibly 200 people in your campground, depending on how many people are at the site. That is a lovely and intimate, like storefront theater audience right there. <laughs> I have, I am, I'm gonna direct shows. This is how we marry our love of the RV world and our love of theater. And we put it into a campground. If a campground was like this, I wouldn't even care if the sites were smaller. As long as the sites are, you know, well yeah. laid out, I wouldn't care if there's lots of them. I wouldn't care if they're smaller because I would be enjoying myself regardless. You know, I would want of, a little space. I would you, not want you always someone's want full hookup sure. right next to my picnic table. No. I would be very, very particular about how the full hookups, how the sewer is in relationship to the person's site because I just think that is so repulsive you always want more space and but you know what you want more than space it's you want separation so sometimes shrubbery. campgrounds have small sites but then they've got shrubbery or fences yes. or whatever that just a little bit of separation between sites it's not about space it's about the quality of how you use what you have there are some giant sites that are yes, terribly that are laid awful. out <laughs> uh, we've been into some of them they horrible and there are some small sites we've been into that are really yeah. really lovely i don't think a lot of people realize how expensive it is to build a campground i mean it, it can cost you like sixty thousand dollars per site yeah. you know it can cost a lot of money but i think if you do it if you do it in a very conscious and thoughtful way that is planned and organized and engineered so that it can be repeatable, that, that you can have a national network of these places, that just, is memberships and all that sort of stuff. I think it would be fantastic. And you might think that I'm talking about KOA. And no, KOA isn't that. I mean, some KOAs sort of are similar to that, but KOA is just a franchise network of like, it's like marketing association where the campgrounds were all different. I just, first off, we have to do this in Montana. Because then we can get in touch with the Montana Shakespeare Theater Company. <laughs> You're just because I'm back there. I'm never leaving this topic. Because they do outdoor Shakespeare. 
I've auditioned for them a few times. Would have really loved to have worked in Montana for a summer. But they do summer Shakespeare. They could come for a weekend. I mean, oh, a one performance. Just like on a, just on a well, Saturday night. And I think if it is oh, going to be gracious. in an urban atmosphere, then it's going to be busy and fun like that. You yeah. know, and some of them are going to be more... What if, but, what if we just took this back to Chicago? Yeah. I mean, it limits our season. We would really only be able to be open like April but, to maybe early October. One of the most convenient campgrounds to Chicago is there's a campground at the Hollywood Casino in, yeah. in Joliet. Right? <laughs> We've stayed there. And it's just a big sort of pavement <laughs> lot. But, but they could... Easily, the oh, space they have could do something like this with it. They absolutely could. So I think on that note, if anyone is looking to start a campground and likes what we're saying, Steal you know, this idea, take it, or or you know, we got no money, but we'll help you put it together. I will come direct shows for your campground. Bring the arts to campgrounds. How fantastic would that be? Absolutely. All right. So if you want to let us know what you would put in a campground leave it in the comments on youtube or wherever you're seeing this podcast on social media Does on it, the it, website it. where well, there's places to leave comments everywhere yeah we just put this thing everywhere <laughs> just leave a comment you look you could leave a comment on a post that doesn't even have to do with this podcast and we'd probably still know what you were talking about all right we're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to have our fresh tank black tank segment and a new brain teaser be right back are your tires ready for spring and summer trips? FMCA, the world's largest nonprofit RV club, has a tire savings program for its members, and it's one of their most popular benefits. You can save hundreds per tire purchasing Michelin, Continental, and Hankook tires for passenger vehicles, light trucks, and RVs. Visit FMCA.com to get tire quotes and a list of participating dealers, and while you're there, sign up for FMCA. FMCA membership is $85 for your first year or $75 upon renewal. And with the code RVMILES21, you can save $10 instantly and join for just $75 for your first year. To view a full list of benefits, visit FMCA.com or call 800-543-3622 and use the code RVMILES21 for $10 off for your first year. When it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route, adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did I mention all of that is included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. It is now time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank goes to the animal, the raccoon, maybe the human. I don't know. Whoever it was that set our truck off at 430 in the morning. I were laying there, we're sleeping. All of a sudden, there is this loud. It's taken us a long time before we became those people, but now we've became those people last night. We did because <laughs> I'm sitting there going, "What is that? Who is that? Why is this I'm happening?" I'm like right away. I'm like, "That's our truck alarm," and she's like, "Oh, who is that? Looking outside? What's, <laughs> what's going what's on? Going on? <laughs> this is so, why would someone be doing this? Because it couldn't possibly be us." And then I'm thinking. Why is this going off? Like neither the keys are in the bowl where they go. Like no one's hit the the, the panic well, button. Well, I am having. I will say I'm having a hard time with with the keys. <laughs> because why are you having a hard time with the keys? Okay, because the key fob. So in our RAM, the 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 buttons were in a different order on the mm -hmm. key fob. So on the top it was unlock, the middle was lock, and the bottom was panic alarm. And now the the on the Ford, the middle one is the panic button. It is. Yeah. Are you sure? It's it. Either way, what, I think what, you flipped it. One, I, one I, is one way, and the other is the other way. And I'm backwards because I and I so I autumn. You know, I have that muscle memory, and I I pressed the alarm button a few times. Huh. I have not had that happen to me. <laughs> so I mean, I did immediately ask you when I realized it was our truck. I said. Are you laying on the keys? No, I was not. <laughs> so four in the morning. I'm not I, laying on the keys. Well, I, you look. <laughs> Wouldn't put it past me. I, yes, exactly. So I don't know what set it off last night, but it was horribly embarrassing. It was 
so very loud, so loud. And it did take us what felt like an eternity to get it turned off. So uh, black tank to whatever set it off, (laughs) black tank to us for the amount of time that we took to like actually remedy that situation. (laughs) I'm surprised our neighbors weren't giving us a like stink eye this morning. What's in your fresh tank? Uh, So my fresh tank goes to, we have um, a new contributor over at rvmiles.com that I'm really excited to work with. And it's not so much that I want you to go over and see her recipes. Her name is Christina. She's an avid RVer and chef, and she loves cooking in the outdoors. She puts these amazing recipes together. And someone who uh, just so happens to be um, a listener of RV Miles kind of, you know, connected us a little bit or I happened to see a comment of theirs about her and it got me over to her site and I started going through her Instagram and I was just blown away by what she is cooking. And Real quality meals. On on a campfire, you know, on a grill in these beautiful cast irons and it's just really, really lovely. And so I asked her if she would like to contribute a few recipes to the website because I have really wanted to beef that section up. But I think we all know by now that that's, I'm not going to be the one to do it. Okay. If we had a section on takeout, I'd probably able, like, I'd be able to fill it for days, but I am not going to talk to you about cooking over a fire because it's just not something I do. So she did just send us her first recipe. It was for gnocchi and sage. It was for gnocchi with sausage and walnuts and sage. And it's beautiful and it's easy. But what I'm fresh tanking this for is that I just want to encourage you, if you're on Instagram, to go over to her. She's It's at time, T-H-Y-M-E, and timber. And that's her Instagram handle. And just go over, give her a follow, and just look at what she's creating because it's really, really inspiring and really easy. And she's just the nicest person. So I'm very excited that she's going to give her time to RV Miles and her recipes But I'm also just, I would really like to see her kind of get some of the the praise that she deserves for what she's doing cooking outside. Because, I I mean, that is amazing to me. I don't do it. (laughs) I do the outdoor cooking in this family. You do the outdoor blackstoning (laughs) in this family, for sure. So, all right, Jay. um, And just really quick before we move on, I will put um, a link to her Instagram just in the show notes, rvmiles.com slash 187. If it was really difficult to figure out what I was saying, just go to the show notes and then you can check out her stuff. All right, Jay, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank is, again, leaf blowers. And what is going for, for on? a different reason this time. So they have just, they, you know, you know that feeling. If you, if you use the, the showers at a campground, a lot of people don't use them, but when we're not on full hookups, we often use them. And, there's single stall showers here. So like four doors on the outside of the building and they had just cleaned them. And you know, that feeling of just like you watch them clean them and then you're like, okay, I'm going to take a shower now. Oh, I got to go. Yes. You're like, you have your bag prepped and you're like, okay, it's time to go now. So I'm doing that. So I, I I get over there and I'm in there and I'm taking a shower. Right. And then some, where is this going? Somebody comes by blowing the leaves outside and the leaves and all the dust and all this stuff oh, are coming no. underneath the door into the shower. Oh, no. While I'm showering, after somebody just went through and cleaned them all and did oh. all that work. And then while I'm trying to get myself clean, there's like dust blowing oh, in at Jade. a rapid speed under this small shower stall at me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's why I shower in the RV. <laughs> that, so that is my black tank. This oh week. my goodness. Okay, what's in your fresh tank? My fresh tank is a restaurant we just went to. Now, mm-hmm. over the course of the past year, we have not been able to go inside to very few restaurants. We've been very careful about that. We've eaten outside a decent amount, uh, not a ton, but we went to this place called Sal and Mookie's in downtown Biloxi, right near all the casinos. And it's a giant restaurant, right? Beautiful and outdoor space. It's Italian. It's like New York Italian. It's like New York style mm-hmm. pizza. And there's spaghetti and meatballs and all this sort of stuff. And it was really, really, really good food that I had been wanting for a long time. 
pl- the the server the server actually came. I actually think she was the owner. Or I think manager she was or something. too. Yeah. She came by after I ate my. We had I, I Abby and I each had individual pizzas. Abby, yeah. Henry, and I all had individual pizzas. Yes. Yeah, so and- you got um. <laughs> they were ten inch. You got one that was called the, the meat, meat packing, packing district. district. We're just gonna leave that there, <laughs> and then. <laughs> It's a family show. And then I got one that was um, a buffalo chicken. So that was, and I actually got mine on a cauliflower crust, which was spectacular. So she came by after I had finished mine and she's like, did you breathe? (laughs) Because yeah. <laughs> literally the rest of Jason's family is only halfway through their meal. Now that's, you know, I was only maybe two slices in because I was, I will say, I was reading off a 52 question, the office quiz to the family while we were having dinner, you know, because this is what we do. This is what we do now. This is what we do now. But we're the, we're those people now when it comes to the office. They're getting my fresh tank, not because, not just because the food was so good. Uh, but because it was just so COVID friendly, responsible, mm-hmm. they had closed off tables that were too close to each other. They put little green flags on tables that were sanitized and you could go find your own table so you could feel that out yourselves. They Because you, you don't have a server per se. Mm-hmm. You, go you go up go and you counter. counter service and you order. They do come around and ask, you know, can I take a plate? Can I get you anything? And they deliver it to your table. Yeah, and all that they do all stuff. that. But you, it's a community effort by everyone who works there to take care of everybody in the restaurant. And, you know, I have to say, too, they were appropriately masked up, not that fake mask up that seems to be very popular, but like appropriately <laughs> It was like up. they have they had paper menus if you wanted them. Yeah. If not, you could just look at the menu sign. They had really thought about everything mm-hmm. and uh, and it really made you feel like you could go dining. Now, hopefully it this is all good. ending soon. Ish. Well, you know, who knows? It's but... a new world. And but it was also, I think, for us to um, it was three o'clock in the afternoon. And this is kind of what we've chosen to do if we're going to attempt to eat outside at a restaurant is we choose to go in the middle of the day. So it's I you can consider it a late lunch or an early dinner. Um, and then that way it's a little bit quieter in the restaurant. And that's just our comfort level. We feel better about it in that respect. But I would say regardless of if when we find ourselves in a post-pandemic world, if you find yourselves in Ocean Springs, this is just a really great place to get some food because regardless of whether they were wearing masks or how the restaurant was behaving, there was a real sense of just nice people who genuinely cared about their restaurant and how it and was run customers. and their customers and the quality of their food and, and oh, everything. It was it was some of the best pizza I've had in a very, very long time. And Ethan had Ethan had sp- well, Jack had spaghetti and meatballs, mm-hmm. but Ethan ate the meatballs. <laughs> well these meatballs we were like <laughs> the size of baseballs. They were huge and there wow. were four of them. And Jack's spaghetti it was ten dollars and it was giant. Jack's eating spaghetti. adult meals now. I know. Oh my gosh. It's getting sort so- of eating them. It's getting so expensive to go out to eat now. He's, and he's Ethan, ordering them, but is he eating them? Ethan, I don't know. <laughs> Ethan's on the cusp. Ethan's on the cusp. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to like put a kid's meal in no, front of him. problem is the only thing he wants is chicken strips. So. I, know, I know. Well, he's going <laughs> to upgrade. Meatballs. Well, you know, how many restaurants have adult-sized chicken <laughs> strips? Because true. a lot of adults go from childhood into adulthood and all they want are chicken strips. So I think Ethan's going to be okay. All right. We're going to wrap this episode up with a brain teaser. Larry lives in a closet. Every year, he is allowed to come out. He gets fed really well. Then he gets tossed in a car. He gets to enjoy a crowded trip with Lily, Lance, and Lola. And then he has to get rid of everything he ate. He then is forced to stay under the bed while the family is out enjoying themselves. He then is dragged out from under the bed and gets fed again. Then he again gets tossed in the car with Lily, Lance, and Lola. He gets home, is forced to get rid of everything he was fed, and then Larry gets stuffed into the closet for the rest of the year. What is Larry? 
Larry feels like a bad episode of the X-Files that landed on the cutting room floor. We'll have the Never. answer to that and a whole lot more on next week's episode of the RV Miles podcast. Yes, we will. And hey, if you are enjoying RV Miles, would you please do us a favor and head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a five-star review. Your five-star review is helping put RV Miles in front of a whole new group of listeners. So thank you very, very much for doing that. RV Miles is also all across social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And of course, the best way to get in touch with Jason and I is to head over to the RV Miles Facebook group. We love chatting with everybody over there, and it is really such a fantastic group of people. Finally, I want to remind you that the RV Miles 2021 RV and Camping Gear Guide is out. It's a big list of things that we've had an opportunity to check out or just things that caught our eye this year. If you want to see the list for yourself, you can head over to rvmiles.com or you can go to our Amazon store where we have now put every gear guide from the entire life of RV Miles there in the Amazon store. Amazon.com slash shop slash RV Miles. All right, everyone. Until next week, thank you so much for joining us. Be well, stay safe. Please continue to wear your mask and keep logging those RV miles. See ya. See ya.